double cut, leave you laid out on the floor. Try to duck and roll, hit and miss. Now you kinda start, shoulda practiced more. Shoulda hit the mask, get out that more. Plan that you're the best. You gotta show me son, actions over words, baby boy. Is you real or what? Talking way too much, world come. Back sports, talking way too much, world come. Back sports, talking way too much, world come. Back sports, sports, sports. Bomb squad! Shout out to the hottest chat in the M F N game. A side, A side, A side, A side official. No negotiation needed. Period. You already know. The first in the building, the OG Mr. Golden, is on deck. Shout out to Arna Brown. You already know what it is. Salute to your man. I see you in the building. Carlos Rosado is in the building. Salute to your brother. The GOAT Big Blunts and Boxing is on deck in the building. We back in this thing. What's good? What's good with it, man? I want to say WCS salute to you and the hottest MF and chat in the game. A side official. Yes, you know how we do. You know what I'm saying? You know how we do over here. We have to get straight down to it. Tough Glove Boxing is in the building. WC Salute King, we ready for some cooking. Salute to you, King. You already know what it do, man. We we look, we about to head over to Friday in a couple of hours. It's you know, you know how we love the weekend now. You know how we love the weekend. Don't trip. You know what I'm saying? We enjoy the weekend now. You know, everybody energy elevate. They feel different. Oh, that's especially if you're getting paid. If you just got paid. This is Hot Grease, Chron Hot Grease Chronicles EP 27 Nueve 2024. We're talking about the one and only Bud Crawford, a.k.a. the Boogeyman. The fighter that no one wants to fight. If you're reading the title, it said Boogeyman Crawford accepts and Canelo rejects. Worst duck master of century. Zoo, he seems unsure. Let's get down to it. As you probably heard, right? Uh, again and again and again. There is some shuffling going around, people. There is some shuffling going around. See, when it came down to Jerron Ennis, the way he went up there and extracted the belt that wasn't within the protocol of boxing. But the way Crawford did it was more so the protocol if you're going to do it administratively. You know what I'm saying? Hot grease there, Ennis. This man did it correctly when it comes to the administrative paperwork. He went through the WBO. And he, he wants to step in the ring to get the title. But we'll get back to that. Let's talk about Mr. Cinnamon Duck Master Coalition himself, pound for pound, number one, on the Duck Masters Coalition list. Mr. I want a payday, payday, payday. Imagine how your own words come back and slap you up across that freaking cinnamon red head of yours, that Canelo. Can you imagine that, y'all? This man humiliated. Demetrius Andrade for, for um, crashing his presser, his post-fight presser, and say, yeah, I know, I know, you want payday. Well, guess what? Anybody who listening, y'all should be making memes and clips on that. Canelo wants a freaking payday, bro. That's all he wants. Can Canelo wants a payday, too. Not only that, Canelo is so far up his own ass that he, he, he can't see shit no more. You know what I'm saying? He can't see shit no more. He's covering in it. He smell it. It smells okay for him. He he can't see shit no more, man. He got stuff all on his face. All that. Why? Because he's fighting fighters for freaking a purse that he should get for fighting ranked. I'm talking about fighters that we want to see. He's busy at his fighting the riders. You know what I'm saying? He's fighting the riders, bro. 
He's fighting the Charlos. He's fighting fighters that we just don't want to see. We want to see him get challenged now. See, when you're climbing that ladder, you don't get a free pass. You know what I'm saying? They don't give you vouchers when you're climbing that ladder. You're supposed to climb that ladder, and then when you get there, yeah, every now and then you can have a fight that's a soft ragu can. You know what I'm saying? An empty can. You know, it could get real tomato saucy for him. He earned it. But right now, Canelo is just rejecting. And he's he, he's coming the biggest hypocrite of boxing right now. Because he don't want to fight Crawford for the same excuse. I don't, I'm not going to gain anything. I don't have anything. And then somebody who's in his division, Benavidez, he, he will gain something. But he says the only thing he's going to bring is what? 25 pounds to the fight. If that ain't some bullshit right there, let me tell you. If that ain't some bullshit right there. But guess what? I have to give it up to Benavidez because the way he looked at it, he said, I got I to gotta come back with something. You know what I'm saying? I talked about this earlier. I got to come back with something. And, and Benavidez let the world know that if he want to talk about $152 million, $200 million, then guess what? I hope when you get that $150 million, you have enough left over to buy a pair of nuts. Classic. Hot grease. Classic Benavidez. Classic. Hopefully after you make that $150 million, you will have enough left over to buy a pair of cojones. Look, a pair of cojones, man. He's calling Canelo for what he is right now. See, I knew something was up when I seen Canelo... You know, at the way in that time, that, that viral picture that went around, like Canelo had camel toes. Yeah, yeah, I'm going there. I'm going there. Yeah, because Benavidez is right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Canelo is up here acting stupid. He ain't being respectful. He ain't trying to fight like the great. If, 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 you, if you that man, why can't you just go in here and fight the Mexican monster, man? I guess ever since Mike Tyson... Stole that, but yet, you know, he has a bigger name and all that. Ever, ever since he put that out, it seems like Canelo had a had an attitude. You know what I'm saying? He say, um, "I'll take it serious when he's sober or whatever the case may be." He's really been a straight up hater, man. You know what I'm saying? I look at it like this: How are we supposed to believe that Mungia? Look at him, Mungia in there. He's taller than Canelo, but Canelo has his hand on the man's shoulder, sizing him up. Now, you know the difference with this and, and my, my guy, John Bones Jones? Tom Aspinall attempted to do the same thing when he rolled up on John Jones, and he didn't pull up on him. They was in the same venue, and they was having a um, expo, I believe. So he went over to where John Jones was. And the two, you know, came face to face and shook hands. And, and Aspinall wanted to try to put his right hand on John Jones' shoulder. And John Jones being the guy he is. Come on now. The lethal assassin he is. Quickly swiped Aspinall's hand off his shoulder. And Aspinall said, oh, no, no, no. I wasn't being disrespectful. He said, yeah, you know, you're not sizing me up, fella. You're not sizing me up. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what Canelo's doing right here. Canelo's just up here like like Munguia. He's sitting there like a son. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm 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 welcoming you into the ring to share. What's the purpose of sharing a square with somebody you, that you're gonna beat, man? I'm talking about in this case. Like, look at Munguia. He's all freaking pliable he's in a submissive position he got his hands behind his back he's being a good little son bro let me check something out right now i, I just don't like that picture I, I don't like it at all i'm not gonna lie to you let me um check something out right quick let me check something out Mongia is 27 years old He's only six years younger than Canelo Alvarez. He's 43 victories in, 
Undefeated, of course, 34 of those coming by way of knockout. He's 27 years old, and he's standing on stage acting like he's he's a kid that, you know, has is, 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 is finally gotten into the good graces of his father. You know what I'm saying? A father he never knew. But he found out his mama, his mama bared a child outside of the marriage back in the day. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at, but Mungia, John Ryder, Sergey Darianchenko, and then everybody else, you know what I'm saying? It's not even worth mentioning. And you, he got a, he got Gabe Rosado on there. Come on, stop it. Who else is on here? You know, Saddam Ali, he fought him back in 2018. I just thought y'all might want to know that. Um, he fought, fought um, Johnny Navarrete twice. I mean, come on, man. This guy in 2013, you know? So, so, so I'm, 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 I'm enlightening you on something, just like I did Canelo. Now, let's go through this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm counting the number of fights he had in Mexico now. I'm at 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Must I go any further? He's, look. 30 of Hami Mangia's fight in his professional career was in Mexico. 13 was outside of Mexico. Now you do the thought process. You do it for yourself. He gets a shot now. The fighters like Terrence Crawford is up here fighting in the, in, in the U.S., fighting in other people's backyard. But he didn't, he didn't have no freaking, you know what I'm saying, Mexico tour. Well, he just built up his record. The 40 and 0, Muhammad McGill did the same thing Canelo did. And guess what? He's getting the fight. He's getting the fight because daddy says so. Daddy's sitting up there with his hand on the shoulder and say, good job, son. Good job. You've been a good little boy. Good job. I'm going to re um, reward you. I'm not even going to knock you out. I'm just going to go in there and we're going to go through the same process as Charlo. Some, somehow, some way in the fight. I'm going to drop you just to know, you know, um, gap the scorecards a little bit, separate the scoring a little bit, and then we're going to have some fun. At the end of the day, you get paid, I get paid, and um, you go back to um, fighting in Mexico again for another 12 to 15 fights like freaking Carlos Ocampo. Come on, bro. Shout out to Jessica the Queen on deck. I see you. Salute to you. Sir, seeing you on deck. I see you. What's good? Salute, man. Canelo going to fight Mongea, Jose Benavidez, and some unknown dude to finish his career. You think so? You have you have confidence that Carlos, that he's going to fight David, David Benavidez? Oh, you said Jose Benavidez. Man, stop it. Stop it. That's what I, I had to go back and do a double take. You know what I'm saying? I had to go back and do a double take. My, my fault, man. Sometimes I be doing, I mean, I am mean, thinking I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to be reading. Sometimes I just can't put the characters and syllables together and it's, it get all scrambled up sometime, man. You know, Ebonics is my first language before I was accurately able to be able to speak somewhat above average English, you know what I'm saying? But every now and then, my Ebonic, my Ebonic come back. Um, then he says, did you see that pick up on Doran Zoo? Patient. Yeah, I got it right here. I just haven't put it up yet. I just wanted to, you know, let y'all see the picture of Canelo and and this fight that, yeah, both of them did the same thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Both of them. Canelo has over 30 professional fights in Mexico, and Homie Magia has um, over 30 professional fights. 
No, he has 30 professional fights even and 13 outside of that. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, bro. But this is what everybody's talking about, of course. And this is what everybody's talking about. You know what? That don't do anything for me. When it comes to zoo, that, that does nothing for, for me because right now, switching topics, this is the way I look at it. This is this is um, Sebastian Fundor, okay, a.k.a. Al Pacino when he wants to be at the presser, you know what I'm saying, with the open collar show, shirts, you know, and stuff like that. Then you get, you know, a Sebastian Fundora who wants to at the open workout like he's coming out the motherfucking forest from deer hunting and get goddamn skinning him some motherfucking deer carcass and, and fix some deer jerky. You know what I'm saying? Catching a couple of coons out there and some rabbits. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I can't understand what you're trying to be right now, but you better be on your game. You better be on your game taking this fight on short notice. You better be on your game. That goes for both of them, but this this fight, this this picture right here, don't do shit because I think Zoo has enough, you know what I'm saying, um, boxing IQ to, to, to work that body. You know what I'm saying? The body is there to work that body and make it happen. But my bone I got to pick with Zoo is Zoo act like he don't really want to fight face Crawford. You feel me? He doesn't give me that all the way that to the total vibe that he want to face Crawford, man. And I'm disappointed because I've been giving him, you know, his his high high marks, his kudos, man. And he's coming off like he want to fight the fight the guy who couldn't beat the guy. What kind of shit is that? What kind of shit is that? I mean, I told y'all. Did I not tell you Crawford made it look too easy? That's what he messed up at. Crawford made it look too easy. Crawford ma made it look too easy. That, that was his downfall right there. Crawford, Crawford made it look too easy against a guy who, you know, had a high percentage of boxing fans going for him. And Crawford shut it all the way down. Not only did he shut it down, he stumped on his back, neck, everything. Slapped him around when he was on the ground, all that. And then picked him up and said, hey, thanks to you, this fight was made. I know I beat your ass, but thanks to you. Without you, this fight wouldn't have been made. He beat that boy silly. But here you go, Zoo fighting Fundora on last minute for unification. I like it. I like I like the grand finale. They put another title in there. I like it. You know, one thing I can say about Fondora, he ain't a punk. Fondora is no punk, man. Tim Zoo's no punk. So when it comes down to them getting it in and this picture right here where Fondora, this is no different than any other picture we've seen. Fondora is like seven, seven, seven feet, 23 inches. You know what I'm saying? And four centimeters, whatever you want to call it. And, and he's been in pictures like this. He's always going to be the taller fighter. But can he break Zoo down? Because Erickson Lubin, even though he was taking mad punishment, he was able to, you know, just break up out for, for a moment and, and, and have, have his, his, his time to leave it all in the ring. And he was able to get the knockdown. But Fondor got up and he finished him. You know what I'm saying? They ended up stopping the fight. What are we going to see from Zoo? Is he is he strong enough to make it out that? You know what I'm saying? Out that turmoil. Is he is he strong enough? In the meantime, I'm going to see the fight. I'm glad they turned into a unification fight. I'm glad that, you know, it wasn't no Canelo duck sauce language. You know what I'm saying? To my, oh, he don't bring anything to the table. I don't want to fight Sebastian Fundor on 12, 12 days notice or whatever the case may be. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's too dangerous. I want to protect my O. I want to protect my title. No. They said, yeah, and that's it. But also, I have to ask Fundora. When Fight Hype was, you know, interviewing you, he was in the media scrum. I just seen it on Fight Hype. I don't know if they the one asking the question, but someone presented the question to Fundora about Crawford. And he said, yeah, you know, 
I, you know, I wouldn't mind. You know, he, he laughed a little bit. I wouldn't mind fighting Crawford. And then he said something that didn't make sense to me. That let me know Fundora. You know, people up here trying to say that Crawford's too small. Fundora said something that kind of stuck with me different. You know what he said? He said, if the money's right. And I said, you never been in the ring with somebody like a Bud Crawford. The money can be on the right and the left. What are you fighting him for? Do you want to fight him for legacy? Or, or it's just all about fighters struggling. Boxing is struggling right now. So every fighter want to get up here and say, oh, if the money's right. Do you think he's going to have? A so, so, so he's looking at it like, okay, if, if he wins, he has a unified title. Now Crawford, he's trying to act like, since he's a unified champion now, finally, after being knocked out and having the opportunity to fight for a title, and then, you know, have God send his angels down here and, 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 and you know, spice it up just a little bit more so you can actually fight a champion, a tougher opponent that you was about to face. Because I know deep down inside, Sebastian was saying, like, God damn. Oh, man, I knew I was going to be WBC champion like my sister. And then they came with this notice, hey, Keith Thurman is out. You want to you wanna step in? You want to do it? And he had to make a decision because that's a dangerous fight for Fundora. That's why I say this picture right here, yeah, it looks, it looks intimidating. Fundora looked like he has a microscopic muscle, a bicep, a microscopic bicep poking out of his right arm. You know what I'm saying? That, I ain't never seen no bicep that long before. You know what I'm saying? His, his bicep is about the, about the length of a glizzy. You know what I'm saying? This man has like a nine, that, you know, what, nine, 10, 11 inch bicep. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's up there, got a hunting cap on. You know, he's looking down. Um, you know, people are saying that, you know, Tim Zoo's in trouble. Why do they always fall for the okie doke with Fandora? He's already been stopped, y'all. Bad. He's been stopped bad. And you want to know something? Let me let me let me remind you of something. All right. Let me remind you of something. Hold on for a second. I'm gonna remind you of something. <clears throat> when he fought um Brian Mendoza, Mendoza had two losses already. But you wanna know another thing? Mendoza has 16 knockouts. That's it. 16 knockouts, right? You want to know how many Sebastian Fondora has? 13 knockouts. You want to know how many he had prior to going in there fighting Brian Mendoza? 13 knockouts. You want to know how many Seb um, Brian Mendoza had? 12. You know who became his 13th knockout victim? Sebastian Fondora. You best believe it. Sebastian Fondora came the thirteenth victim. So when I see Tim Zoo up on deck, twenty four and zero, with seventeen knockouts, it's going to be a competitive fight, man. You know, Fondora, you know he's um twenty six years old. Tim Zoo is twenty seven years old. Yes, Sebastian Fondora is a southpaw. Tim Zoo is orthodox. Tim Zhu is going to have to stand on his alias, the soul taker. Sebastian Fondor is going to have to stand on his alias, the towering inferno. They both going to have to meet in the middle, man. They're going to have to figure it out because whoever the winner is has an opportunity to face the best in boxing. That's what you got to look forward to. And I don't think neither one of them really want to want to face Crawford. Real talk. I don't think so. I don't think they really want to face him, y'all. Real talk. Real talk. Let me see what the chat talking about. Real talk. I don't think so. Because, man, I think this is going to be a close fight. Not even close. Um, we the people have to say,
paying for these bull, these BS ass, um, bullshit ass fights. This is the only way we will ever get the fight that we want to see. You know, we was getting so well. Some of some of them was getting so acclimated to Saudi, you know, making these fights that they was getting comfortable because pretty much we weren't getting anything over here. Then plus you have the fallout shelter that the PBC, you know, you have a lot of prior PBC, you know, boxing fans that that's in the fallout shelter. They waiting for that fight card to get started for the annual calendar. And it's been a slow one. You know. I hope my gear KO Canelo and a cherry pick going wrong. I do. I don't think it's going to happen, though, Tough Glove. I can't see it, brother. I don't see the way Munguia is sitting up here. Let me get this off. I got I to gotta go back to the to the one that really irks the heck out of me. When, when I'm looking at this, bro, I just don't see it. I, I, I don't. Unless Munguia is that silent assassin and he didn't give us everything we wanted to see against John Ryder. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's it. Maybe he didn't give us a thousand percent in the John Ryder fight. Maybe he was getting hit on purpose, man. You know what I'm saying? Has anyone heard anything about the boost fight today? It's Thursday. Stop it, man. Stop it. We can't bring up Boots in here. Boots is a thief. Wait, Canelo wants to go up to heavyweight and fight, but said that Bud is small. I'm too small to um, move up to fight him. Canelo is full of contradictions right now. I'm so disappointed in, in Canelo. Real talk. I'm disappointed in the, in the individuals that continue to give him purses that large. That's what I'm upset about. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I always encourage fighters to get their bag. I do. I'm not encouraging him to get his bag. I'm just saying, stop making excuses for these fighters and saying, well, Crawford, he doesn't bring anything to the table. He's too small. David Benavidez, he don't bring anything to the table except 25 pounds on fight, fight day. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much trying to embarrass him. Man. I mean, you're supposed to be the top dog at one point in time. You're supposed to be up there. You was number one pound for pound. All of a sudden, you're acting like a grandpa. He got his hand on Hummy McGee's shoulder, man. Just giving him a little lecture to my, okay, be a good boy. And, you know, you have some residuals to come after this, too. Be a good boy now. Jay on deck, what's good? He put it on the shirt that he says we have to fight him. Put it on a shirt. We have to fight him. Man. You know, I know, I know um Benavidez Sr. has been going off. And, and rightfully so. He should be going off. He should be checking him. Because that's nonsense, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's nonsense. You know? Georgia Girl, I'm here in Savannah. Okay. Yes, sir. Born and raised straight out of Grady. What? Jessica down in the A. Okay, I, I hear you. I hear you. I thought about moving away. Man, what y'all talking about, Georgia? That go, that go OG again up here talking some shit. <laughs> Being boxing news was good, man. They don't want to see the Omaha monster. Hey, man, look at it this way. Bud has demonstrated... Sometimes you do it so well in the ring, it affects those who watch you do it from outside the ring. You know what I'm saying? I try to tell people, they think I'm just sitting up here ad-libbing and shit. Bud did something I've never seen a fighter do before in the history of boxing. I've never seen a fighter like Bud have a performance like he did with Crawford. I mean, uh, Spence. And Crawford's over there talking shit to Jamel Charlo too. And that's his stable mate. Like he's literally defeating two unified champions in the same, look, in the same gym, under the same coach, in the same night. He's sitting up there whooping on Errol Spence, 
and he's verbally whooping on Jamel Charlo. Told this man he was a bitch ass nigga, man. He's right next to his girl. And Crawford said, you a bitch ass nigga, you a bitch ass. Grabbing his nuts and everything, man. Disrespectful. I've never seen that happen. I've never seen that happen. In, in my in my 89 years of watching boxing, I've never seen that happen. I got a birthday coming up this year, too. Zoo gonna crush Fondor. Fondor never uses reach to its advantage. One thing I, I, I told y'all about Fondor is that it's been said the reason why he loved fighting on the inside the way he do because his eyesight is not that good. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then check this out, Logic. Shout out to Logic in the building. Check this out, Logic. How much effort do you think it take for Fandora to extend that whole branch? Huh? How long do you think it take? How much energy, man? It's better for him to keep it bent and fight on the inside, man. Then extend that freaking long ass branch and it might snap. Look. What if the return time is not, you know, where it need to be? You know, Tom and beats power, right? So what if he leaves that jab out there too long and Zoo is able to get on the inside? From Dory, man, he has 80. Look, bro. Come on. What must must we go down the road? Dude has extremely long limbs. You know what I'm saying? extremely long limbs so just like you said he never uses his reach he, he may be apprehensive about that shit especially after, after mendoza did to him that's a, that's a nasty knockout oh boy was sleep oh boy was sleep man he was sleep and mendoza look mendoza came in there with 12 knockouts to 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 freaking fondora's 13 and guess who became Mendoza's 13th victim? Sebastian Fundora. Crawford is the big dog in the yard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, that's the only thing I always say. You know, when you when you um see a fight like July 29th, you know, last year, you want to see a quick turnaround. You know what I'm saying? As boxing fans, I was like, damn, at least we got the rematch coming up. So, so I was hoping, I was hoping, hoping rematch coming up, rematch, and then it, it just, it just evaporated. You know what I'm saying? That was a, that was a damn good lead up, anticipation. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, from both sides, they had they share boxing fans, and then to see it play out the way it did under the bright lights and see the and see the bloodshed. That, that's that's what's memorable. Listen, I know, I know, I know there's many of us that have different reflections on that night, but the bloodshed dog, the T-Mobile massacre, that's one of the best fights, man, period, point blank, hands down. They should have got train of the year, fight of the year, and fight of the year. Now, fight of the year might be a little bit sketchy, train of the year, fight of the year. Forget that performance of the year, fight of the year, train of the year. It it should have been no ifs, ands, or buts about it. No doubt, no no. You know, uh, let me let me try to no. Because the only reason they didn't want to give that man that, because Spence was a top pound for pound guy, and Crawford made him look like he was nobody. So listen, just because they couldn't get what they wanted, they turn around and say, well. We're not going to reward him too much because, yeah, we happy, you know, that it was a good fight, but it wasn't even competitive. I'm like, who fault is that? You know, Bud did what he's supposed to do. He went in there and, and he beat the brakes off Spence, man. He made it look so simple. It, he made it look like they wasn't even on the same level. It, it has to be a professional, a, a pro-am. This this will look like a pro-am. Um, a, a pro immediate intermediate 
um a pro G League um um a pro elite um <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's it's almost like it was levels to the pro ranks when they stepped in the ring and, and Bud just showed that his whole entire mindset, you know, compared to his team, it was over. His team absolutely watches film. Bud demonstrated his IQ was way higher than Spence when they were sitting up here dogging Bud out for doing what a fighter's lifestyle should consist of. Come on, bro. He gave y'all what y'all wanted. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, look, one thing I know about boxing fans, they are some disloyal individuals. They want to root for the villain, y'all. That's what it is. Just like they did Tyson. You, you, you see, not too many people talk about Van der Holyfield that was down here in the A. You know what I'm saying? I already know where he's from. Please don't put no text in there. What, what, WDA, you know he ain't from the A. He's from Alabama. You know that he up there with that, that Deontay Wilder guy. You know that. Listen, they don't even talk about Holyfield. But they talk about Tyson. And then they was so critical of Crawford. But they wanted to cheer Errol Spence, who's doing everything you weren't supposed to do for a fighter who's at the top and on the pound for pound list and had a very, very solid fan base that supported him. Until Crawford came in there. <laughs> Thanos. He came in there. And, and, and look, they went back to National Geographic. Ladies and gentlemen, it's something that we have been dreading our entire lives. Finally, we have got a sighting of the Omaha monster. This is a more lethal, deadly creature than the Sasquatch and Bigfoot combined. And we all call it on video. Well, not so much. Um, You can go to YouTube and they have the highlights. It was a boxing match in Vegas. And yeah, we was able to see the Omaha monster perform. And believe me, it, it, was, it was an amazing sight to see. And now we got fighters like Sebastian Fundora, Tim Zhu, and Canelo Alvarez. That's unsure if they really want to fight. And uh, let me let me let me throw the other guy in there too, Tiafimo Lopez. You you have to listen to if these guys truly wants to fight. Tio was talk talk talking, and then after the fight, he found out Jermaine Ortiz was a little bit tougher. He said, "Yeah, I'll fight him at a catchweight." Then Sebastian Fundora said, yes, the money's right. Who the hell are you think you talking about money? Oh, my fault. He get it from Canelo. Canelo, oh, he has nothing to offer. He won't pay that. That's three motherfuckers, man. They don't want no smoke. Crawford is accepting while Canelo is rejecting. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. You know what I'm saying? Say it ain't so, man. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But the good thing about, you know, what's coming up is that it it has it has some back end to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, with this 154 pound fight, we still have Jamel Charlo out there. We don't know if he's gonna stay a super welterweight or move up to middleweight. But I sure enough ain't trying to talk to him right now and try to you know boost up a fight between him and Crawford. And and look, I, I'm I'm happy there's people out here talking about well, potentially Crawford and Spence may fight. Hey, I I, I get it. You don't want to get nobody credit. I get it. And then they want to talk about potentially Crawford will have um may have a run in with, with Errol Spence at 154. They may have a rematch at 154. No shit. If they both gonna be fighting 154, and and then you got Tim Zhu tomorrow. Well, he he wanna he wanna go fight um Errol Spence. That just goes to show you. These fighters are willing to take the orders, right? Tim Zhu is it, it look, if somebody offer him the orders like they, they offer Canelo and they say, Tim Zhu, we definitely trying to align Errol Spence back for another shot. Blase Blase, they talk it over with Zhu. 
and then Errol Spence gets a shot at Tim Zhu for the unified titles. You think that's not a good deal for Errol Spence? Hell yeah, it is. You think they ain't trying to still um, screw over Crawford? Hell yeah, they are. But that doesn't mean um, the flight stops. That don't mean Crawford gets gets grounded right now. There's other titles out there. You know what I'm saying? There's other titles. You have the IBF. And you have the WBA. But what happened? Crawford did the administrative work the proper way. He requested for what he earned at 147 pounds to basically request and submit paperwork through the WBO sanctioning body the right way. He didn't wait till Tim Zhu was freaking injured. He's not waiting for an opportune moment where he can submit paperwork knowing it's going to be a dead end reply and say, you know what? Hey, Crawford, we got that. We got what you wanted. They, they say they couldn't go in negotiations with you. So therefore, we're going to be giving you that WBO. That's not happening, bro. This man don't have no draws on his record. No majority decisions. That's one man who, who I can say that wouldn't go through a process like that. He wouldn't allow someone to influence or persuade him to say, hey, this is what you should do, man. You have a fourth division title, man. Come on. Submit the paperwork when he's injured. Come on, bro. You know, because it's, it's a high possibility he may take some damage for this fight. Tim Zhu, for real. He may take some damage. He may take some damage and still win. So we don't know what's going to become of this fight. We have no idea. I know people looking at Sebastian Fondor, how tall he is. But, bro, he's already been exposed twice. No, three times. He was exposed by Jamonte Clark. He was exposed by Erickson Lubin. And he was exposed by Brian Mendoza. Why would y'all not think that Tim Zhu cannot expose him also? Absolutely. Absolutely he can. He can get that shit done. Where did they get that info from? Uh, what info? Can you, can you be more specific? Because sometimes I'm... What info? Let me know what info you're talking about, Jessica. What info? It's crazy, man. But, I, but, but you know, boxing is... In order for you to be a boxing fan, you, you have to understand that the sport is filled with the unexpected, the crazy, the eccentric, you know what I'm saying, chaos, mayhem. That's what boxing is, is filled with. This is no different. You know what I'm saying? We just we just need some excitement right now. We had no we had the bullshit and gunno fight where people wanted to damn, you know, try to come for me. And I say, listen, y'all need to stop acting like I was the first man ever to say a fight was fixed. You know, other cats don't want to other that 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 F word, but come on, bro. You know, we, we we want something that we can sit back and say, okay, Raymond Ford, when he went in there and fought, that that was a rocky moment. You know, that was a rocky moment. Shockey Foster, when he had his moment. Jess Ben Rodriguez and Sonny Edwards. That was fights that we we look for, man. We look for fights like that, that don't have a predetermined result, that you can have a rocky moment, a creed moment, you know what I'm saying, a movie moment. That, that shit right there with Raymond Ford did was awesome, man. That's where you, you, you act like you're fulfilled. Like, man, I really feel like <sighs> boxing finally gave me what I was looking for this year in 2024. Damn. Okay, I feel good. I can sleep well tonight. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I'm trying to go with it. It's been such a dysfunctional relationship. You know, since since you know Bud Crawford went in there and and damn near committed homicide, you know boxing haven't really been the same, man. You know I have to you know I have to tell Bud like, do you know the magnitude of what you did last year? You sent PBC into a spiral, into the pit of a volcano located over there in Omaha, bro. That's what you did. You shut down. An entire fan base, one of the worst fan bases, but an entire fan base of aerosexual shut them down. It was nothing they could do except make excuses there, bud. 
Look, you, you, you have no idea, man, how much you affected boxing. And they can't say it was negative because this is what they talk about. They talk all big. They talk about what a fighter should do. But then when it get done like that and affects boxing, then they get confused. Oh, man, I'm going to deactivate my account. Spence versus Crawford coming up. No, no, no. I didn't say Spence versus Crawford is coming up. I said, if you look at the landscape, right, the forecast could project that if it works out the way it's supposed to, and you're talking about Sebastian Fundor and Tim Zoo winner, face Crawford, then it may potentially get a, a, a Bud Crawford and Errol Spence fight. It depends on if and when Spence returned back to the ring. Because this is another layer to Crawford. He might have retired Spence. But let's just say, for instance, they send Spence back to the ring and he fights for the IBF or he fights for the WBA. One of them. They can make it happen. If Spence is able to win and don't get knocked out, you may potentially see another unification bout and get the rematch that we was looking for, 154, between Crawford and Spence. That's, that's where I was going with that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I appreciate you asking. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you asking and getting clarification. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I'm tough love, no doubt. For sure. I thought Espinosa said they don't know when he's coming back and he had another injury or something like that. He did. He did. That 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 has nothing to do with think think about the timeline I'm talking about, Jessica. Crawford is up next for the winner of Zoo Fandora. They don't have nothing to do with Spence. Do you know how long it's going to take for them to schedule that fight? For Crawford getting the winner of Fandora Zoo? So that's going to take us to the end of 2024. And then we're, we're, we're talking about something else in 2025 down the road. We're not talking about anything that I expect to happen in 24. I'm talking about once the, the 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 fog of war clears up because 154 is, is jumping right now especially with crawford name being tossed around and especially him still holding on these 147 pound belts you know what i'm saying he's still locked in as a unified champion so since we weren't able to get that because his fans was crying you know rehydration i mean not rehydration um weight drain and all this other bullshit cloning. The fact that he activated, he sent the paperwork in properly, professionally. You know what I'm saying? Doing it with etiquette. Now people are talking again like, oh shit, Crawford going to get the winner. Now people are buzzing about this shit. But also at 54, it's supposed to be Spence. So somewhere in 2025, Depending on when Spence returns back to the ring, if he doesn't return back to the ring this year, it's going to be all bad. And then we're talking about we're talking about that shit going up in smoke, what I just said. That was just an assumption. That wasn't anything that was considered to be factual or somebody told me. I'm telling you, I've heard other people mention that Crawford and Errol Spence may potentially take off. I didn't hear anybody talk about it when I was talking about it. That's where I was at with it. I said, you know, Errol Spence and Crawford may potentially cross paths and, and, and sign the dotted line again in 154. And they both may have belts again. But looking at, you know, the time frame for setting these fights and Crawford getting back in the ring and then Spence being out of the ring with a freaking toenail, a hung, hangnail, a uh, uh, freaking cataract, freaking inflammation combined with freaking shingles. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the fuck going on with him, bro. I don't know what's going on with him, bro. They're now saying, what about Boots? What about him? What about him, man? Look. What about him? Boxing is boxing at the end of the day. Crawford isn't signed with nobody. Boots is going through legality. He's going through the courts. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, Cameron Duncan passed away. And now 
they're trying to remove themselves from that contractual agreement, but understanding that they have a landmine in front of them also. Because pretty much when you sign to a promotion and you get a championship belt, it extends your stay. Yeah, it's a little bit it's it's a bit better than an extended stay because we all know the extended stay is a bunch of ghetto ass, you know, dirty ass freaking hotels. But you know, it's extends your stay, man. About two years when you pick up a title. And Boots picked up a title. And look, it, it, you're trying to you're trying to explain to hardcore boxing fans that Team Ennis didn't know that. Team Ennis didn't know that. So now they're trying to do what they attempted to do when it was Victory Boxing and Chris Menendorf. They, they attempted to separate it with Cameron Duncan and make it seem like, hey, I was with Cameron Duncan, not Victory Boxing promotion. Chris Menendorf said, nope, that's not true. It was a promotional deal. So they had to go to court for that. And that's why Booth couldn't spread his freaking wings again. Now, Cameron Duncan, you know what I'm saying? I guess if Cameron was still alive, it wouldn't be a problem. But they're trying to say his wife is somewhat incompetent of 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 carrying forward the the um, promotional demands of getting Boots in his good fights. So why would Crawford want to lock himself in with a Boots in his? And it, it may take longer to go through negotiations than than that's required. I'm pretty sure at this point in time, Crawford is trying to just do you know, do everything to become greater. He's already great. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think him coming three time undisputed by beating Boost Ennis is is it. Straight up. Straight like that. I don't feel that he'll ever get the credit. Because it's still haters. They're never going anywhere. The haters are gonna be there. But I'm I'm just saying in general like Will he get credit if he goes in there and dominates Jerron Ennis? Will he get credit to say, okay, people are going to give him legitimate credit? Or are they going to say, no, nah, man, he, he, he should have just waited for Zoo Fundor. He is at Crawford, man, moving funny. Moving funny at Crawford. Bad for business. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that had to digest a salt tablet fucking with this man. Am I right or wrong? It's a lot of cats had to swallow a salt tablet, y'all, with no chaser. No chaser, bro. They had to put a salt tablet in there and swallow with no chaser, bro. That's how bad Crawford messed up the boxing game, man. He shut down the haters, dog. Who else did that? Who else to that freaking magnitude and that level on the proven grounds inside the damn four corner dominion. Who did it like that? Who went in there taking all the criticism from the fighter he was fighting, saying he ain't fought nobody, to the to the trainer that was was going along with the same anthem to his opponent. He ain't fought nobody. So nobody that was supporting Spence believed that Crawford fought anybody until he started putting those gloves on Spence. Anyway, but hey. I'm with it. I'm all for the rematch. I'm I'm cool with it. I'm I'm cool for a rematch. I I basically was on record as saying I hope the rematch comes quick in a hurry. You know what I'm saying, Jessica? Because I didn't want too many months to go by without revisiting that wound. I don't I didn't want the wound to heal just yet when it came to Crawford Spence. I wanted that I wanted it to still be an open warm pulse pus and and and, and 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 you know I'm saying pus, blood, everything is still fresh. I, I didn't want it too many months ago where it started building up a scab. No, I, I I wanted the rematch to happen in 2023. You know what I'm saying? I just I just wanted to come quick in a hurry. So he can move on past this. But when you go in there and you do your job very, very well when you're supposed to, sometimes it just don't work out 
the way you thought from the results. Crawford did everything he was supposed to do, but Spence, his body couldn't hold up. You know what I'm saying? He's, he, he's up here telling people that he knew about it before he went to the ring, but he was busy up here, you know, punching passports and shit when he won. I mean, when he um got out the ring and when Crawford won. He was punching passports. You know, calling people, trying to say people was broke. I'm out here pa- um, punching passports. He didn't think to get his eye looked at so he can meet that freaking deadline by 2024. He didn't care. He's not confident. One thing I'll say about Spence, though, he got dog. No quit. No quitting him. No quitting. Just don't. Just because you don't quit don't mean Crawford didn't make you quit. He made Spence quit thinking that he didn't fight nobody. You know what I'm saying? He made him think. He, he made him quit thinking, y'all, he didn't fight nobody. He said, tonight I'm fighting somebody. So you can quit thinking I never fought nobody. I just made them look that way. You can quit all that. I'm up here touching you up real easy. Now what? He made Spence quit. quit. Spence quit talking about Crawford ain't fought nobody. Because now his name is on there. And Crawford is 40 victories in and zero defeats. Him and his trainer swallowed a salt tablet that they'll never forget. I love it. I love it. Hot Grease Chronicles, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's only one. There's only one Hot Grease Chronicles, man, with the with, with, with the man himself, Bud Crawford. There's only one Omaha Monster. Now we got to see who he's going to beat up on next. To be honest, looking at Fundora, you know, um, eyeball, you know, freaking zoo like this. I, w- I would want to see Crawford and Fondora for real. I would want I, I I would want Crawford to change his name to Paul Bunyan, you know, if he gets the Fundora fight. Because I <laughs> I just think that he he's gonna become enamored with timber. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna become enamored with chopping wood. He should got then change his name to Paul Bunyan. That's what I want to see. Throw on a sleeveless flannel Crawford and some cut off goddamn jeans and some steel toe boots and show up to the face off. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to see him chop down Fundora. But I'm not up here wishing bad on nobody, man. Best man win out of Zoo Fundora. I, I'm, I'm going for Zoo. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going for Zoo, period. I'm going for Zoo. I'm not changing that up because Fondora's on the scene. And, you know, everybody know he's taller than the average fighter. If Zoo has the right game plan, you know, based off what we know him and how he fights, he should be able to go in there and get the job done. He's tough, man. Zoo is no no bitch whatsoever, man. That dude's tough, man. But I wouldn't mind seeing Crawford chop down that tree, though. I wouldn't, man. I wouldn't mind seeing him come in there with a goddamn axe. I said, hey, fun door. <laughs> you thought I was. And goddamn spit into a goddamn cup. <laughs> you didn't think this day was going to come, did it, fun door? You didn't know I dip. Boy, I goddamn be in the country all the time. I don't just fish. I go there and goddamn hunt, too. I goddamn hunt all the goddamn time. Skin them. Gut them. Cook them up real nice. Real nice. But right now, I got you in front of me. I'm here to get her done. I'm about to get you done real quick. Go ahead and goddamn knock out front door. People up here talking about, I don't know. I don't know. Crawford too small for fun. Everybody is shorter. Everybody is shorter than front door. It don't mean they smaller. If Bud did that, they would have been in his ass. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Just think. <laughs> Just think about that, right? For Errol Spence to come up and said that, why do you think I was hit when, getting hit with the hooks and the jabs, right? For him not having any sense of urgency once the fight was over to go to the doctor and get it checked out. Then we know 2024 is on the horizon. It was a lot of people. 
that want to just leave 23 alone. I get it. I get it. Because cause that Bud made you all experience a freaking nightmare that you will never forget. So it was a lot of freaking aerosexuals who, who went to hide in the bunker. They wanted the 2024 to go in because they actually felt like that if the year go away, the pain will too. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Sound like a squeaky mattress. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's not the way it worked. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. It wasn't going to go away. It wasn't going to go away. Period. You know what I'm saying? But Errol Spence could have got the surgery done in 23, man. If you really want the fight to happen, you could have got the shit done, been healing. But you wait to 2024, January, and then say you're going to be out for eight weeks. And then try to and try to tell, you know, Crawford to get out his feelings. Bro, that's a disappointment straight up, man. That's bogus. That's bogus there, Spence. It's bogus. No matter how you look at it, that was bogus, man. Fraud-like. You say you've been knowing about this, but yet you, you're locked into a rematch clause. You have individuals submitting paperwork on Crawford that's locked into a rematch clause just to get one of his belts. But yet... Spence is up here. I'm, I, I, I wonder. Look, I, I just wonder. You know, I just wonder if this is shit you could have did 2023. You could have just said, "I'm out 2023." Did they give you a call? Did they tell you to wait just to plan the shit with Ennis so they can submit paperwork? Were you a part of that too, Spence? It's some some fishy stuff going on. It's some fishy stuff going on. Real talk. It's fishy, bro. It's very fishy. Spoil fishy. For real. Like, how can you know about this before you went into fight with Crawford? But yet, you leave and you punch in passports, but yet you don't make a doctor's appointment. You wait till the next year come on, and then you get surgery. Nobody knows, and you go live and don't even tell nobody. Fraud. Fraud, fraud, fraud. You didn't talk to your fans. You didn't talk to the pe- um boxing fans that wasn't you didn't you didn't talk to nobody. You just went live like you don't know how to speak English with a patch on your eye so everybody can goddamn run and scramble. Oh, 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 breaking, breaking, breaking. Errol Spence, I sir. Well, did you not know that you were still in the contract? Because cause Team Ennis knew that you were still locked into a contract. They knew Crawford was locked into a contract. So with the time that you wasted, I wonder, did you have anything to do with with, with the planning process of Ennis, being that you could have released yourself already, knowing that you had the cataract problem, because you told us that's why you was getting hit with all those damn hooks and jabs. So you could have jumped out the contract. You activated your 30 day, but you could have jumped out. Therefore, Crawford potentially still may have been in line to fight Boots with them activating. They could have been negotiating to fight Boots because they could have did the right way. Or you wanted to wait to a certain amount of time for the IBF to submit that paperwork. And and, and, and you haven't dropped off because it's, it's, it's funny how he gets stripped and then they break the news that the rematch ain't happening no more. It's not like the rematch is going to happen in 147, but I'm talking about the rematch ain't happening no more. Was it before or after Ennis took the title? Which which one was it, bro? I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out. Was it before or after, bro? Because you knew you had to search. I'm not going to get on that right now. I'm not going to get on that. You know why? Because, you know, Arrow had plenty of time to get this done, and he didn't. Then all of a sudden, Ennis submits paperwork while t- why, why Bud is tied up. His hands are tied for a rematch. I'm trying to I'm trying to find out when did the initial conversation behind the scenes start, not the actual action. Because we already know what was going on during that time. 
Spence haven't let the public know, nor his people, that the fight was off. You know what I'm saying? They haven't let the people know that the fight was off. They sent the letter up there, and Team Crawford had 30 days to respond. They responded and said, we're locked in. So the fight with Errol Spence was still on. But when did this all start? Last year? The end? No, um, November, December? Y'all plan this out for 2024? Man, come on, bro. Shout out to um, Eagle on deck. Said Bud Crawford is an alien. He is not human, not from this planet. His timing is special. Zoo and Canelo will be committing career suicide once they fight Crawford next. <sighs> I would like to think that they will potentially take that step. But Crawford has these fighters, you know, acting different, man. Like, he's supposed to be such a small dude. You know what I'm saying? Who haven't fought nobody. But he walk around with this damn dangerous tag hanging off his freaking shoulders. You know what I'm saying? And he has this tag hanging off his shoulders. And, and, and not just any tag. This is not like folklore tag. This is a tag that people seem play out July 29th. People still talking about that. Sidebar conversations. You know what I'm saying? Office topics. Cats riding down the street behind the garbage truck. You know, in the sanitation department, got them talking about boxing. To my man, I still feel some type of way, man. I, I worked overtime and got a raise, and I put it all on arrow, man. Lost that shit, man. I, I still haven't recovered, dog. That's why I just can't wait, you know, to put in at least about three more months of DoorDash. I'm going to get my money back. I'm going to get my money back. But goddamn it, Spence, Spence should be reimbursing us for that, that performance that he did. I agree. Spence should reimburse y'all. Y'all gullible naysayers. I forget. I for, um, forgot Spence told Bud to get out of his feelings. Then he delete that post. Yeah, he he told he told Bud to get out of his feelings. So I'm saying, how can you tell a man to get out of his feelings when he's really he really want to rematch with you? Not just to prove it again, but it was going to be a nice paycheck, Jessica. You know what I'm saying? He. I'm pretty sure Bud wanted to step and revisit Vegas once again at 154 to, to show the people again that this time it's going to look even worse. But I, I, I will tell you all what I, what I believe what would have happened in the rematch. The referee would have stopped it again because they still want to get some fights out of Spence. They still want to get some fights out of him. So the referee would have st stepped in again. I don't know if it would have been Harvey Dock, but in this case, it probably would have been Tony Weeks. Because we know Tony Weeks can step in through the door real quick, slip in and slide out. The fight's over and you didn't even know it. Why? Oh, it looked like, you know, I was having, um, you know what I'm saying? I was doing some kinesis, some telekinesis, and I felt that he was about to land a good shot on you. So before he landed a shot, I stopped the fight. I saved you from the punishment because I seen what happened last year and we, we just can't have that again. They put Tony Weeks in there. Tony Weeks is going to goddamn stop the fight based off what Crawford was thinking. He's going to go in there and tell the people, well, what I was, what I was close to Crawford, I got this signal that he was going to throw an uppercut, a counter uppercut again. And then he had already been lining them up with the lead um, hook and I thought he was going to just start doing damage from there like he did the first time you know what I'm saying it would be all bad for Spence man but that whole scenario I always thought to myself I said who else was in the planning process of submitting that paperwork who else because it's a lot of stuff that went down after that you know what I'm saying when, when he went live with the eye situation and then the announcement hasn't been made yet that the fight was off. Freaking Crawford gets stripped of the IBF. And then come to find out that the rematch is off. 
Now, Steven Espinosa also was on record as saying, uh, to be honest, you know, we we shouldn't get, keep Crawford, you know, waiting for that long. Um, he has better things to do. Um, you know, he said he wanted to get into timber sports and go in there and chop some trees down, I'm thinking. Uh, I don't know what that's about, but if he want to leave boxing and go, you know, you know, do some burly or some tree chopping, he can do that. You know, he didn't really give me an indication of who he was talking about. You know, Espinosa was up here just talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, we couldn't keep him. We It wouldn't be right for us to keep him. No shit. You know why? Because cause Spence don't know what he wants to do. You all, knows what, you, you all know what was going on, but Spence don't know. Spence don't know whether he want that smoke no more. Not from Bud. Not from Bud, he don't. Not from Bud. Bud whooped your ass and told you, thank you. It was because of you the fight happened. Well, Bud was being generous, but no, Bud, it was because of you the fight that happened. It was because of you that you was up there beating up an entire freaking stable of, of unified champions. Two unified champions under the tutelage of Derrick James. You just went in there and just bombarded Crushed. Ravished. Annihilated. Destroyed. Decimated. You decimated it. You did, Crawford. It was because of you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You affected lives like you wouldn't believe. So much to the fact that Errol Spence... He just felt like, no, no, no. I could do this surgery right now. That means I'm going to be set to face Crawford next year. Heck no. I'm going to go chill. I'm going to go on vacation with my girl. I'm going to punch the passport. And then I'm going to get it right then. Matter of fact, did they call yet? Team Ennis. Oh, that's when they're going to send it? Okay, cool. Tell them I stay locked in. They can go ahead and submit that letter. I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm stay locked in. You know what I'm saying? And then when they get the belt, then that's, you know, y'all can tell them, hey, the fight ain't happening. Okay? That's that's what I'm thinking. And that's what I'm processing. How can all this come to fruition? No, bro. No, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm putting shit together, bro. Real talk. I'm putting some shit together that makes sense. I know it. I know it, man. You know, it just takes a little bit of time. I, I know it. I know they got a link. I know they got a link, man. Just think about it. Go back to million dollars worth of game, man. You know what I'm saying? They were showing Spence mad love over there. You know? And isn't Spence originally, you know, he was born in Long Island? You know, they were showing him mad love. So, why, why wouldn't it be normal for Spence to look out for team minutes? Because, really, because of Spence, Ennis was able to, to submit that dead end, end request, knowing that Crawford couldn't suffice. They could they they couldn't they couldn't um what's to call it? They couldn't come to an agreement to go into negotiations for, for freaking Ennis because he was still locked in with, with Spence. And then when the title was removed. Not too too long after that, the fight was off, and Crawford and Spence wants to say to my Crawford, "Get out your feelings." And this is what Crawford did. Now we can't forget what he put up here. Let, let, me, let me go up here to my archives. You know what I'm saying? I don't heard it all now, L. Spence. It's okay though, because all in all, I'm glad it's over and done with. I wish you well, my brother. So you know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. Come on. <coughs> Come on, y'all. Come on. Them pieces don't match up to y'all. Them pieces ain't matching up, huh? Why, why, why would Spence stay 
stay locked into something that he couldn't, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he couldn't move forward with. And then that time, you know, have Crawford believing that it was going to be a rematch when it really wasn't. But ultimately, the scheme was for Jerron Ennis to submit that paperwork while he was still locked into a contract with Errol Spence, knowing that it was going to be a dead-end response, that they couldn't oblige to go into negotiations with him, so he was going to get the title. And then, shortly after that, what happened? It's not like Spence lost the title. Crawford lost the title. Yes, the IBF was formerly in the possession of Errol Spence, and Crawford beat that ass to July 29th, so he was the new owner. Until Team Ennis submitted a freaking request to have that shit removed when Errol Spence could have got up out of that shit last year. Why did they wait to 2024 to come out in the wheelchair for some surgery in the process of Jerron Ennis requesting that belt? I'm telling you, bro. When I'm wrong, I'm, I feel like I'm right. And when I'm right, I may be wrong. But in this case, being wrong, I'm right. <laughs> I feel I feel good about it. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I just never mentioned it. I thought about that. I've been thinking about that for a while. I said, I, I don't like to be a conspiracist, conspiracist, right? You know, just, but I'm thinking about that. I said, oh, hold up, hold up, bro. How did the fight absolve after and it's got the belt after he submitted the letter. They submitted the letter knowing that they couldn't oblige. What if, what if, 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 if the fight would have been over with, you know, the rematch would have been done, consummated. During the time the letter was submitted, he was still locked in. He was still locked in for uh, with a contract with Spence, so he couldn't he couldn't appease them. So they end up getting the belt, and then shortly thereafter, the motherfucker, the fight is over. The rematch is done. It's not happening. Cancel. Oh boy. Blunt say three more months of DoorDash is crazy. Yeah, man, for real. Hey, no shot at DoorDash. There's a lot of cats I know that does DoorDash, man. I ain't knocking on no DoorDash, man. I don't want cats like, man, it's, it's making a living. You say they, they get out here and, and get it in. Man, I ain't knocking y'all, man. Get your DoorDash in, bro. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my guy Deion Washington, Tuscaloosa. You know, Alabama on deck, man. Stay on cold. That's what Deion said. Stay on cold. I've been telling y'all for years that Canelo wasn't shit. Y'all kept telling me I was saying, you you did, man. I have to admit, you did say Canelo wasn't shit. Absolutely. I have to attest, you did say that. I guess, I I, I guess you coming on the live saying he wasn't shit. It was a little bit too abrasive. <laughs> hey, hey, Dion, it was a little bit too abrasive, brother. For real. You come over here and say Canelo ain't shit. <laughs> hey, dog. <laughs> hey, people say, don't you work with the kids, Dion? Why are you coming in here talking about our champ like that? We're gonna call the we're gonna call the education department. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't be you shouldn't be around to teach sports anyway, man. You know what I'm saying? You're sour. You're just a sour person. <laughs> Andrew was good, man. Bud was very humble in the aftermath of his complete destruction of Spence. He was. He was, Andrew. He was very humble. <coughs> he was very humble. You're absolutely right. He was humble in that in that period of destruction. But I I, I smell I smell a rat, man. I smell some 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 rats. Some rat some 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 type of odor is being emitted. I, I, I'm just, I just been thinking about it, right? Oh man, come on, bro. Just think about it. Just put this shit together now. That that Spence can stay locked into a contract with a fight that knowing that he wasn't going to be able to make.
But ultimately, who's aligned? Who was look, who was aligned for Spence? They left the WBO to go to the IBF. Ennis was aligned to face Spence. Therefore, he still got what he wanted. He just didn't get the other two. He wasn't able to get the WBC and the WBA, but he got the IBF. He was in the IBF. He was aligned. He was waiting. He couldn't step in the ring because you had to undispute it. But when Crawford wanted, they didn't want Crawford. They wanted to get it by all means necessary. So that's what Spence stayed locked into that freaking um, rematch. Why? Fully knowing that Team Ennis was going to submit a letter because the IBF already knew about it. And they was going to send it to a dead-end request and get what they wanted. And then not, shortly after that, the rematch is absolved. Tell me that ain't some fishy shit, bro. <sighs> you got to run it back, man. No doubt. Why not? Why not run it back? You know what I'm saying? Why not run it back? We we all want to see it. You know what I'm saying? We all want to see it. In case it was somebody in the chat that didn't know this man right here was almost on the first 48, y'all. He was almost on the first 48. I, I, I They probably still thinking about putting him on there. He almost on the first 48. Because it was too many witnesses. These cats today, they talk about what they're doing tomorrow. They don't talk about what they used, what they did back in, and, you know, act like, oh, man, they can't prove it. It's already. No, they talk about what you're going to do. I mean, Terrence Crawford pretty much one of them. He said, oh, yeah, I'm going to take my belt. Don't make me take my belt off. He took his belt off, man. He wrapped that shit around his knuckles and then put his gloves on. Look at that. Line them up real, real nice. Look at that, man. I, I, I guess Bo Mack haven't gave him the order yet to, to, to change that lead, that jab to, to, to a hook. You know, just switch it up now. Change that jab to a hook. I, I, I guess this picture wasn't there yet. I guess it wasn't there yet. But I, I, I guess this was, though. I guess this was. That's a straight... That's a strength. Jesus Christ, man. Damn. Why you had to do it to him, bud? Huh? Just distorting that man's freaking facial composition like that. Blood everywhere, god damn it. Why did you have to do that to him, bud? You had this man out here faking, knowing damn well he could have pulled out that, that contract last year. But they was there, they was working together, man. They had a they had an alliance going. Spencer freaking team Ennis. Look, Spencer's gonna stay locked in long enough for Ennis the goddamn IBF to help his ass out. Yeah, Cameron Duncan while he was live was probably making phone calls and promising freaking boots. You know, I'm gonna get you a title. I'm gonna get you a title. I'm gonna get you a title. He did. He got him a title. He got him a title. No one's going to convince me they weren't working. You know, they didn't have no lines going. Because why do you didn't get this shit done in 2023? I would like to know that. For real. Look at that, y'all. Look at that hook. Look at that hook now. Tan that man up. Ugh. Come on, man. The longer, you know, the longer the date falls back in the, in, in, in the boxing annals, you know what I'm saying? Bringing up pictures like this becomes even that much sweeter. You know what I'm saying? It hadn't even been a full year yet. And and me putting these pictures up here, you know, it just brings back like we're sitting ringside seeing this play out. Look at that, y'all. Look at that hook perfectly placed on the chin. Look at that shit. Look at that beautiful work beautiful work y'all sat him down y'all sat him down shout out to snack season you know what i'm saying strap season turn the snack season then the patch season you know what i'm saying this man 
changed lives, bro. This man had Errol Spence sitting on a freaking stool. He wasn't praying. He was just thinking about that song. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Listen to the... <laughs> That mo wish he was sitting beneath a waterfall. Just letting the water run over his head like he was in a shower. He just wanted a refresher. He just wanted the swelling to go down, the pain to go away. Man, come on, bro. Come on, man. This man changed lives, bro. You know what I'm saying? Omaha Monster. You know what I'm saying? We we we're talking about modern day gladiators, man. That's 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 Bud, man. Bud took many many lives that day. He took many lives, man. Them aerosexuals, they have yet to reappear in the masses. They have been fragmented. They have been disbanded. They have been ostracized, banished. Whatever you want to say, man. Whatever you whatever word you want to use, man. Confined. One man and his team did that shit. One of the best ever. One of the best ever. Period. One of the best ever. <clears throat> Not keeping the same energy. All these fanboys. 2.0 Spence Jr. Fangirls when Bud is clearly ducking Boot Sanders. Well, what, what are you getting at? How, how is he ducking anybody who pretty much conspired to freaking get a title while the man was locked into a rematch how is that ducking how's that ducking i mean just like just like dion said do you have a cold or not are we standing on cold or not so do you respect that in life for him to go up here and put in administrative paperwork to to request a title without stepping in the ring and splitting the ropes under the bright lights and fighting for it is that where you at with it? That doesn't sound like you stand on cold, man. If you even if you even know what cold is. It look, it took them long enough. It took them a whole close to an hour and a half. You know what I'm saying? To peek them little them eyes out and see if the coast was clear to sneak up here. The closer it got to Friday, and they, they got more confidence, y'all. He said, and Bud doesn't even fight enough to be the boogeyman. Get real. Tim gonna knock Bud. Man, come on. I can't even finish that. You know why? It makes no sense. I got strays over here talking stupid. N not making any sense at all. You busy talking about how many times Bud fight. Hey, listen. Listen, let me let me let me educate you a little bit, bro, because you need to change your name. When they complain about Bud Crawford fighting Sean Porter, right? Who did who did who did Bud fight after Sean Porter? He was he, he was trying to fight who again? Oh, he was trying to fight Spence, right? He was trying to fight Spence, right? Spence after he fought your Dennis Ugas, right? Oh, so negotiations didn't work. So he fought what? David Avenesian. Okay, he went and beat David Avenesian, right? Who did he fight after Avenesian? So it don't matter how many times he fought. The fights that he had when the, within this last time period was with the purpose. It was with the purpose. It's not like he beat Sean Porter and then he said, you know what, Jim Gray? I want to fight David Avenesian next. Well, hold up, hold up, um, Terrence. Um, the the fight fans want to know what happened to Errol Spence. Um, I thought you and Errol Spence was yeah, yeah, but I wanna I wanna fight David Avenesian. You know what I'm saying? He he's been on my radar for a while. He been calling no, no, Terrence, no, Terrence. Mm -mm. He hasn't been on your radar. He hasn't called you out. No one really knows who you're talking about. No, he didn't do what Errol Spence did. When Errol Spence was asked about Bud. He said, yeah, that'd be a good fight, but um, fighting Canelo it will be even better fight. Come on, bro. It's too much out there already. And then y'all come over here under these fake names. Man, come on. Nobody, nobody has time for that, man. Let me go up here. 
for a second. Hold on for a second. Let me. So. So check this out, y'all. Packs of boxing. You go to his channel. He joined today, y'all. Just to come over to my channel. I'm telling them hoes don't stop. He don't have no content because he joined today. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at with it. You know, they come over here and the aerosexuals don't have no identity. And they come over here on the fake accounts and they get mad. You know what I'm saying? So I got a penalty kick his ass up out of here. Because it's probably somebody that really want to come over here and 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 click the link and and talk, but they know I'm 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 right on some shit though. They know I'm right. They don't want to accept it. You know they used to find it so easy to say what Crawford hasn't done. You know what I'm saying? They used to talk about what he hasn't done, but let's talk about what he did. That's all you got to do. Let's talk about what he did. How he did it. What motivated him, motivated him to do it. Come on, man. What did I say? I don't believe Errol Spence boxing IQ will have him in there being able to outthink Crawford. Also, I said Diddy James is no way that I see him out coaching Bo Mack. No way. And what happened? Bo Mack was up there giving orders. It's time to turn that jab into a hook. Oh, my God. Why did he say that? Why did he say that, bro? I mean, that was beautiful instructions. Not only that, Crawford is, 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 is a fighter who's already competing on the highest level, and he was still listening to his coach. Opposite of some fighters who's in, he's just confused. It's just confused of what they train to be saying. Like, they don't even know. <clears throat> Boots was offered that fight first and turned it down on BLK Prime. I'm not, you know, BLK Prime, I wasn't really trying to go there because I don't want to agitate any silent partners. You know what I'm saying? Any, any silent partners that was, you know, trying to put together the fight in the street of um, Newark. But I will say this. We know, WCS put it out there, that I believe that Spence and Ennis was working together. Because nobody's going to convince me that Spence couldn't have got out that freaking rematch earlier knowing that he had a, a freaking um, cataract surgery. No, 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 no. You're not making any sense, Spence. The fact that Spence said, why do you think I was being hit with all them jabs and hooks? And he basically implied that he knew about this heading into the fight. So if it got that serious, it was that way when you got out the fight because you got beat up and them gloves was all in your freaking pupil space. You know what I'm saying? Them gloves was in there like it was my space all over again. Them gloves say, nope, my space, my space. Them jabs, my space. Them hooks, my space. Them, them counter uppercuts, my space. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they was just there chilling. They was there chilling, y'all. Seriously, they was just there chilling. And this man could have got up out of there knowing that, that Ennis was a line to be next up in the IBF. Boxing is a dirty game, man. They had that man submit that paperwork and Spence could have got out that rematch and then it could have been official. Spence could have released that out the rematch and then sent the letter to Crawford who would have been free and clear and said, hey, you need to go into negotiations with Boots. It didn't happen. You know why it didn't happen? Because they didn't want it to happen. Nobody's going to tell me that Spence didn't know about Ennis because goddamn the ranking system knew he was up there. The ranking systems knew that. Spence knew he wasn't going to 
have the rematch with Crawford. He knew he had a pre-existing from what he said. So why would you go on vacation and everything and let 2024 come into existence and one of the biggest rematch people anticipating doesn't happen because you want to be selfish and go on vacation and, and, and wait and wait and wait and then say, okay, six months pass by. Okay, go ahead. Y- y- y'all get with the IBF. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. Spence was an IBF champion for quite some time. Somebody made some phone calls. Somebody made some phone calls. They sent the letter. After the letter was 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 um the response came back that they could not oblige negotiations. He was stripped. And then soon after that, the rematch was off. And you're trying to tell me that Errol Spence did not know the rematch was going to be off, period. He knew he wasn't going to fight him. He did. That's unfortunate, man. You know, because just when, when the aerosexuals wanted to find a way to return, you know, and, and support support their leader or God, their savior, they just turned right back and put the lid back down just like they was Arcadia. You know what I'm saying? Just like the Arcadias do. They're going to go back in the freaking hibernation and wait for another Spence to come out. But I'm about to roll up out. I'm going to leave y'all with this right here. You know what I'm saying? Remember that. Remember that. Remember this right here too. You know what I'm saying? Remember this right here too. And then ultimately, pound for pound number one, put some respect on his name. Shout out to the hottest chat in the MF and game. A-side official. No negotiation needed. Period. I'm out. Peace.